In the last video of D&D Discussions, we got through the rest of the schools of magic. Now, in this video, we'll be going over the magics made by the magnificent Matthew Mercer. I split these apart from the main subclasses because Critical Role holds a special place in my heart, and not just because they're a bunch of talented voice actors. So, I wanted to make sure all of their works, whether official or unofficial, are noted. Hello, adventurers, and thank you for joining me on Weaver's Wonderful World. And in this video, we'll be going over Chronergy and Graviturgy magic. Magic, which is all about time and mass manipulation. This video will be much shorter than usual as these two subclasses don't have as many features as the others and I'm covering two instead of three or four. Wizards who pick up this magic want to control and manipulate time, bending it to their will to help their allies and hinder their foes in the blink of an eye. With the ramping of Deutimus energy, the wizard bends the flow of time like a skilled musician works an instrument during a performance. Upon picking up this magic at second level, the wizard is allotted the ability to force themselves or a creature they can see within 30 feet to re-roll their attack roll, saving throw, or ability to check by slightly rewinding time. This is done after the wizard can see if the roll was a success or a failure, and the creature must use the second roll. It's kind of like a second chance to succeed for your party if they fail at something they need to succeed at. Time magic is definitely going to be weird in D&D. This is a nice one for the wizards because it speeds them up just a little bit. Once the wizard picks up this subclass at second level, this ability allows them to add their intelligence modifier into their initiative roll. Hitting 6th level allows the wizard to use an action to magically force a creature within 60 feet of them to make a constitution saving throw against their spell DC. If they fail the saving throw, that creature is incapacitated until the end of the wizard's next turn or if they take damage by being encased in a strong magical field of energy. Upon 10th level, the wizard is able to cast a spell of 4th level or higher into a condensed moat, effectively freezing the spell in time for 1 hour. It only has 1 hit point, however it does have a DC of 15. The moat or bead in this case can be released by anyone holding it, if they use an action to do so. For all intents and purposes, the creature that releases the spell is considered the caster for any effect that applies. However, the spell uses the wizard's spell attack bonus and save DC. If the bead is broken, it vanishes in a flash of light and the spell is lost. Once the wizard creates the beaded moat for a spell, they cannot do it again until after a short or long rest. The future is for the wizard to see. All possibilities are laid before them and they can decide which future they'd like to go down by reaching through these possibilities and pulling out the future they choose. When a creature makes any kind of roll, the wizard can just ignore it and make the roll either the minimum to succeed or below that to fail. So if the rogue needs to pick a lock but failed, the wizard can reach into time and pull the timeline where the rogue succeeded into reality. This does come at a cost of one exhaustion point, however, so using this sparingly is a good idea. It keeps everyone on the planets they reside on, or forces objects away from each other depending on the circumstances. With this subclass, gravity is at the wizard's command. This is a cool feature. The wizard can double or have the weight of a small or large creature they can see within 30 feet for one minute. If a creature's weight is halved in this way, their movement speed is increased by 10 feet and can jump twice as far. As well, the creature gets advantage on all strength checks and saving throws. If a creature's weight is doubled with this feature, they suffer 10 feet of movement loss and have disadvantage on all strength checks and saves. Once the wizard reaches the class level of 10th level, they can up this to any creature or object of size huge or smaller. At 6th level, the wizard has a pretty good handle on how gravity works. When casting a spell, they can cause the creature they are targeting to move 5 feet in any direction to an unoccupied space. If the creature is willing, nothing else happens. If this is by an attack and the attack hits, they must move. Or if the creature fails a saving throw against the spell itself. Upon hitting 10th level, the wizard can get deadly with magic. They can make their fighter's weapon attack deal an extra 1d10 of damage, or increase the gravity around a falling enemy to cause them an extra 2d10 of falling damage when they hit the ground. It's amazing what gravity can accomplish when the wizard gets creative. 
Is that pesky goblin getting a little too close for comfort? Are they specifically targeting the wizard because magic is dangerous? Well, now there's Event Horizon. Once the wizard reaches 14th level, they can use this feature to halt the advance of a creature they can see within 30 feet of themselves. If the creature fails a strength saving throw, they take 2d10 damage and their movement is reduced to zero. Upon a successful strength saving throw, that damage is reduced by half and they lose half of their movement. This feature can be used again, but only by expending a level 3 3 spell slot, otherwise the wizard must take a long rest to regain its use. So, I thought about this for a moment, and I was surprised it took me this long to think of it. But, from this point on, I'll be putting my thoughts on the video subject at the end of each video from now on. I like these wizard subclasses. Each one has a very unique use for multiple situations. Like with Graviturgy, if you want your rogue to get to a higher point, adjust density is a fantastic way to do that. And given the ability for weapon attacks to do more damage with gravity well is pretty ingenious to say the least. And just straight up ignoring rolls with conv Virgin future can change a lot of things, especially for someone who continues to have a lot of bad roles. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a huge fan of Matthew Mercer's subclasses. They are well thought out and can sometimes be a little OP. But like everything else, it's all dependent on the roll of the dice, so even an OP ability can be shunted. Well, that's it for the final wizard subclass video. Thank you, adventurers, for joining me on Weaver's Wonderful World. As always, I'm your host, Ginsu Weaver, and remember, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Donuts are the best breakfast food. So eat up, stay healthy, and I'll catch you heroes in the next episode of D&D Discussions.